Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome back to Soil Lab. We've been getting a lot of questions on the channel lately about biochar, and so we thought we'd develop a study, do some research, and answer the question, does biochar work? Biochar is an organic soil amendment that you can use to add to your soil to perhaps enhance soil fertility. If we really want to know how that biochar is produced, we need to get into, if you're feeling fancy, what pyrolysis really is. And what pyrolysis is and how biochar is produced is it's burned in a low oxygen, high temperature environment. The kind of organics that are often burned to make biochar are different wood sources, either hardwoods or softwoods or really any other organic residue from an agricultural source. These could be grasses, manures, those sorts of things. Well, we purchased a bag of commercially available biochar to conduct a study for you. This one happens to be an uncharged biochar from a softwood source. Uh, the recommendations on this bag told us to add it um, up to 20% by volume, but as low as 1% by, by volume. For the sake of this study, we added it at 5% by volume, which happened to be one uh, full scoop into this tray. So we did this in a replicated study like we typically do. We added the biochar, we watered it in, we had an untreated soil, the same soil, which got the same amount of water. Then we waited one week and took multiple soil samples and analyzed those for available nutrition. So when we're talking about biochar as a soil amendment, or really any soil amendment, we need to be just a little more descriptive on what benefit our soil is going to get from these biochar additions. Some might say that it helps with water holding capacity, and certainly it can and does, but we didn't study that here. It can also help with microbial biomass and microbial growth, helping build that living soil. Again, that's not what we measured here. But the main thing that I wanted to look at was the effect on available nutrients. Now one thing that we know for certain is that biochar greatly enhances the cation exchange capacity or the CEC of your soil and that's because it has so many exchange sites on it. What's interesting is that biochar has also been shown to enhance the anion exchange capacity, something that's not talked about that much. Now, if you're wondering, Matt, wh why are you talking about chemistry? I don't understand these terms. What does that mean? Well, functionally, think of your soil like a magnet, and that magnet is grabbing onto cations like calcium, magnesium, potassium, ammonium, even sodium. Now, not all soils have an anion exchange capacity, but the biochar can add those anion exchange sites as well. So now we add this biochar and we're thinking, okay, we know it's gonna hold those cations, but it's gonna also give our soil a greater ability to perhaps hold anions like phosphates and sulfates as an example. So we're gonna dive into the data and see what we learned. You can see here with the arrow that we saw a general trend from the untreated to the treated soil in terms of a reduction in nutrient when we added the biochar. What, we added a soil amendment and saw a reduction in nutrient? Well, that's because we added the uncharged biochar. So in that soil environment, it was acting like a sponge and sucking in those nutrients. So we had fewer available nutrients in the soil for our plants to take up, but probably not less total nutrient in the soil. Another way to look at the same thing is that we were charging our biochar while it was in the soil. What do we mean by charging a biochar? Well, typically your biochar will be charged with a compost, some other nutrient source, maybe even a compost tea or that vermicompost you've learned how to make. So we put an uncharged biochar into the soil and that soil charged it. For that reason, if we did incremental small amounts of biochar additions over time, that could definitely change our results. Remember, this is just after one week. Now let's talk soil chemistry just a little bit for those of you who want a deeper dive. As we look at our different nutrients here, we saw a reduction in ni total nitrogen. Now that would be both nitrate, which is an anion, as well as ammonium, which is a cation. The sum of those two, we still saw the reduction. Then we drive into phosphorus, and this is one that kind of interests me um, because a lot of times we want to hold that phosphorus on our, on our site and not allow it to move off. Well, phosphate is an anion. We saw a reduction there too, which is unique and something that we wouldn't typically or necessarily see with other soil amendment or organic additions. Now, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, those are all cations, and we saw reductions in those cations as well, which makes sense. We added this high cation exchange capacity, this high CEC biochar, and saw that reduction as it was absorbing, adsorbing those cations. Now it's kind of interesting, our sulfur, another anion, similarly saw that reduction. And again, that's pretty unique to a product like biochar. 
But then we see one anomaly or one kind of difference here, and that's sodium. We actually saw an increase in the sodium. Well, sodium is a positively charged ion, so it's a cation. So why in the world would we see an increase in sodium if we saw decreases in all of our other cations? Well, this is tied back to something called the adsorption affinity series. Basically what that means is that sodium has a lower attraction for soil and organic particles than all the others. So as that biochar was absorbing all that calcium, magnesium, potassium, it actually was kicking some sodium off. It was making space for those cations that had a greater affinity. So how I view this is as a benefit in terms of sodium, because that's putting more of that sodium into soil solution so that it can leach out a little bit later while our other nutrients are held in the root, root zone to exchange with our plants later in the season. All right, the last data point that I really want to talk about is soil pH. And so in our case, as we look at pH, we saw a slight reduction after the biochar addition. Now, that may be typical or that may be atypical. That's what we saw in our study with our soil. But we've looked at a lot of other researchers and their data suggests that you might see an increase, so you might see a decrease, or you might see no change in pH following biochar additions. So what are some of the key takeaways from this study? Well, one, biochar as a soil amendment certainly changes the soil chemistry in terms of available nutrients. Another takeaway is we really want to be conscious of our soil conditions in terms of available nutrients and whether we're applying a charged or an uncharged biochar. And I'd argue that there's a best use for each of those. Let's say our soil test results come back and we have an excess of many of our nutrients, both cations and anions. And I wanna hold those anions and cations, those soil nutrients in place over the winter. I can add an uncharged biochar like we did in our study, and that's gonna hold those nutrients through the winter into that next growing season, making sure that those don't leach out. Now, if I want to add a biochar during the growing season, I'd probably be to my benefit, especially if I was in a lower fertility soil, to add a biochar that's already charged so that it's not occupying more seats with those nutrients, but helping to exchange those nutrients that are already available. Well, geez, you already bought a bag of, of biochar and just like us, you saw that it wasn't charged yet. Well, what can you do? You can charge your own biochar with a compost source, a vermicompost source, or even a compost tea. And this charging doesn't take an exceptional amount of time. We just need an amount of that compost, some water, and some time to let it soak and exchange nutrients a couple of days, and then we can add that amendment to our lawn or our garden. So after looking at the data, listening to our takeaways, if, you, if your curiosity has been piqued and you'd like to see us compare charged biochar to uncharged biochar, drop a comment below and let us know and we'll be sure to get that study off the ground for you as well. In the meantime, we hope that you can take this information and apply it to your lawn and your garden. Thanks for watching our dive into biochar. I'll look forward to seeing you in the lab.